we're fighting. Yes, Hope, we're fighting. Hello, welcome back to this Let's Play of Final Fantasy 13. I'm Matthew Marco with AdmiralMapping.com, and today we're going to continue on past the point where uh, I messed up last time, so I don't really know what's coming. More fights, uh, probably, because this is an RPG. Um, I know I complained a lot early on, and I'm still probably going to complain about how confusing this game is. But at the moment, I'm currently in the Medeal section of Final Fantasy VII, which, if you don't know, is the part where Final Fantasy VII gets really confusing for a bit and just becomes, like, the Avon end of Evangelion levels of, like, pseudo-intellectual navel-gazing. And I love it, but it's explained so terribly. And it makes me remember that Final Fantasy having stupid stories is not a new thing. In fact, it's a very old thing. Um, at least this game gives you a handy, like, set of instructions. All that stuff with Cloud is, uh, terrible. Um, I know I said I wanted to talk about my experience with Final Fantasy in general while playing this, and, uh, mostly I've been kind of distracted by the plot, but, uh, Seven's what I'm playing. I'm in Medeal right now, uh, replaying it for my podcast. Of course, you can find that at normalmapping.com. Gotta get those plugs. Uh, we're on iTunes. It's a good show. Um, and uh, Seven's really interesting. It's probably the third RPG I ever played. I played uh, Super Mario RPG when I was really young, when that came out. Young enough that I didn't even know why I was leveling up or what XP was and stuff like that. Um, and then I played Earthbound, and I kind of had a better sense at that point, but Final Fantasy VII was the first introduction to like a more typical, I guess. Yes, devastating physical attacks. We should synergist. We're gonna get wrecked by these guys. Um, sorry. Let's do this. I owe you. This seems like the way to do it. Um, Final Fantasy VII was a game that when I went to junior high, everyone was talking about. It was maybe the first time I'd ever been pressured into, uh playing a game, because I didn't really know about it. I was a Nintendo kid growing up, and all of my uh, friends talked about this crazy PlayStation game, and my younger brother had a PlayStation that he didn't really use, because he was too young for it, and uh, I decided that I was going to uh, give it a shot. Why not, right? Um, it's the game everyone talks about. Uh, these are people that I kind of trust, because they like the same games I do. That was terrible. I don't really know what I was supposed to do there. Um, but they were wrecking me. Um, oh, story bit. A, a warship from Pulse. You mean they made it this far? No, of course not. Not during the war, not since. They might have tried, but none of their forces made it into Cocoon. They only damaged the outer rim. Then the Sanctum's foul sea pushed them back. What, you, uh, sleep through history? <laughs> More or less. So, what's a ship from Pulse doing here? Once the war was over, people couldn't live near the rim anymore. In places like the Hanging Edge. So the Foul Sea, they gathered up scrap from Pulse and used it for rebuilding here. This is what was left. A bunch of garbage. Who'd have thunk? Pulse file C and who knows what mixed in with all the trash. Who'd have thunk? Anyway, as we were saying about uh, Final Fantasy VII, um, that was a game that kind of defined how I think about RPGs after that, uh, since I played it uh, so young. Most of my summer between 7th and 8th grade was spent playing Final Fantasy pretty much non-stop. Obsessive would not begin to cover it. Uh, that was a game that I played uh, 
to full completion, like beating the weapons, getting master material on everybody, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. I didn't go so far as to morph all of the characters, or all of the sources that you needed from the uh, submarine, or whatever it is, but it got pretty close. I uh, wouldn't have put it past me if uh, I had been a little older to do that, to go that far. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which is a ridiculous amount of work to put into a game. But, uh... I'm never that obsessive about completion anymore. That was a thing that existed in a very particular time and space, and I've since mostly given up. Part of growing older, really. Uh, but, because of that, that game holds like a really important spot in my growing up. Let's get this over with. Um, in that it's kind of the game I think of when I think about, like, what it means for, a, like, an RPG to be really important to me. Even though it's not even my favorite Final Fantasy at this point. Like, a, it's like a middling one. So much of its sounds and its uh, rhythms and the experiences within are just, like, ingrained into me. It's just how I think about RPGs now. And, uh... That's kind of a bummer, really. Uh, in part because all RPGs did become so derivative of 7, even to the extent that I think Final Fantasy X and this Final Fantasy go out of their way to draw comparisons when they don't need to. I think they can rest on their own morals. Um, and it hurts it because Final Fantasy VII was important because of its time and place. Like, the idea of that kind of RPG on a new medium like CD-ROM is what made it special, not necessarily that it was the best game ever made. Uh, but going back to it, it definitely has its moments. Uh, it's a very silly game, is the thing that I think is easy to forget uh, in the context of like the self-seriousness of Advent Children and uh, how people talk about that game in such like hushed tones as if it is... Uh, this profoundly deep experience, when really it's just the Turks are awesome, uh, Sephiroth is sympathetic, uh, more or less, uh, he's given motivations that make sense, which a lot of JRPGs, or, or games in general, don't really give their protagonists. Uh, and you have a bunch of characters that are like visually distinct and interesting, and uh, you have a love triangle that's at the four. Uh, I think the romance while it is very juvenile, is really central to what people liked about that game. Um, even if they don't really know how to articulate that. Um, and the way it rather gracefully actually transfers the affections of Eris as like this idyllic figure onto Tifa as like a more realistic... Uh, in terms of personality, let's say nothing about Tifa as like the original for a lot of uh, young western kids booby anime lady. Uh, neither here nor there, really, um, in how I think about her as, like, a character, but, uh, there's, there's stuff in there that's, like, oh god, what did I just pick up? That's what I get for buttoning through really fast. Let's see if it's an equipment. Don't need that. Don't need that. My items actually say new, don't they? Could be a Deceptisol. Could be this metal armband. Protectors. Nobody's deprotecting me. So I'm not too worried about it. Um. Let's do a new file. Um. It's those human moments, like the interactions between the characters when they're being silly, like Cloud at the play during the, the uh, date, or the way the Turks show up and have kind of this parallel story where they're just being goofs but they're also like their own anime heroes like that's the stuff that makes Final Fantasy 7 a really interesting experience uh, not like Sephiroth and Cloud and their taciturn ellipsesness uh, not necessarily the uh, like post grunge industrial hellscape that is their world like that's important, but I think for different reasons than most people think. I think that's the important thing in the sense of 
it's a world that people hadn't seen before, and it is a world in which there was so much more detail than you'd have in that stock fantasy setting, where I really like the Super Nintendo Final Fantasies, but realistically what they have isn't much better than like an RPG Maker set of tiles where, oh, uh, here's what barrels look like, and here's what crates look like, and here's the clocks, and, you know, it, like it all was very cookie cutter, and 7, because of the way it was built out of pre-rendered backgrounds, uh, it used its world to create a thing that wasn't cookie cutter, it couldn't be cookie cutter because each image had to be its own thing. And I think that's the kind of thing that could never be uh, oversung, is how much like this unique one-off uh, design actually helped that game. There's so much texture in the world, like each house is a unique thing because they had to build a unique thing because they had to load a unique JPEG that you'd run across. And it's, you know, it's archaic technology and games aren't made that way today. But when you look at it, you think, well, maybe they should be. Maybe that's a great thing. I would love to uh, play more games that looked like Final Fantasy VII. I really would. And it is a full-on shame that that kind of style of game doesn't exist anymore. That that much care isn't really put into these worlds. I think maybe the closest you'd get is something like uh, the modern Persona games, which aren't pre-rendered, but they have the... Right? They aren't. Right. They can't be. Sorry. Um, but they have the benefit of existing where they only have a few environments compared to most RPGs, especially of this kind of type. An RPG the size of uh, Persona is like nearly unthinkable uh, in like a console context for sure. You have to have a uh, big world to explore and a world map and cutscenes and stuff like that. And that's why, in reality, I think most of the interesting stuff in the RPG space has come on mobile in the past decade. Uh, not mobile mobile, but uh, you know what I mean. Uh, handheld, sorry, playing and talking. This is another really terrible uh, battle. This is just, I don't know how to fight these things effectively. Like, I just cannot seem to... I think maybe I should have targeted the owl first. I think I did the right thing by attacking the uh, the dancing owl, because that one does like boosts and stuff, and that's bad. But I just can't seem to get together. Bobbing and weaving. Let's see if we can just kill this thing before it gets too far out of hand for us. Staggered. That'll help. Time to pull the old switcheroo. Okay, we should be alright now. Uh, it, yeah, like 3D RPGs like this look beautiful. It's fun to run around in a big world and run into enemies, but they just don't have the specificity. Uh, and that's been true of every RPG in a post PlayStation era. Like the minute they got rid of that, I. Like, outside of Persona, and I admit, like I said, it's an edge case because its world is very small. Uh, and even that, like, you talk to people and get, uh, like, quests in, like, the third floor classrooms, but those aren't unique environments. The classroom's just, like, the classroom. They don't have the character of any of the, like, houses in Final Fantasy. Um, it's just not the game they're making. I, I understand that, but... It's, uh, the difference is obvious. Come on, stagger. There we go. Um, 
God, we're gonna die. Come on, heal. Saboteur is going to be more important right now. If we can get both these guys de shell, that would be great. Okay. Let's get Zaz healed up. And then, I would like to, yeah, switch to... Switch to this and see how this works out. Part of the problem with this kind of uh, character setup is they don't change rows at all. Uh, and it's actually really hard, or not rows, but they don't move. Like, when I have a commander, the commander's flipping around and uh, drawing aggro and uh, dispersing the damage, but we're just all grouped up and there's no way to change that. So we're just getting worked. I just don't understand how we're supposed to do enough damage to these guys fast enough. I feel like we're just constantly underpowered. I guess we'll just chip away. I don't really know what else to do. As long as our, uh, our buffs hold up. Thanks. We should be okay. There we go. Something's happening. Yeah, zero stars. I deserve zero stars. I just cannot get it together with these guys. Yeah, it's kind of been my Final Fantasy VII feelings of late. Um, as part of our project, we're going to rewatch Advent Children. I'm actually really excited for that. Even though that's a terrible, really stupid movie um, that walks back a lot of the good things about Final Fantasy VII, uh, it's good fun in like a dumb action movie context. I will give it that. I don't really want to be... What's Vigilance? That's cool, I guess, but I'd rather finish up Ravager, which we're almost done. Okay, now we'll work on this. She's done with that. Is she gonna learn any more abilities? No? Be a medic, then. He's done with Ravager. Uh, work on Synergist. We're closer to finishing that off. Then we'll work on Medic. Okay. Um, let's uh, see if there's anything in the shop. Nope. There never is. I don't know why I worry about it. I didn't mean to make a new save there. Oh well. How are we doing for time? We're doing good. Oh yeah, 7, despite its terrible translations, a better game than I remembered it being, which is good. Oh, hey, hi. Hey, welcome to the party. You miss us? No. Would it kill her to smile?
to move. Okay, this is a much better team. How's she doing for... Yeah, we need to spend some money. Uh, she's going to be commando all the way, so... Slightly gauge ATB attack upon attacking target afflicted with status ailments. Does D protect and stuff count as a status ailment? I guess that's what matters here. That's how I feel about that. Always more hit points. Always. Um... This should make things a lot easier, actually. I'm glad that we have her back. Time to get serious. Because I should be able to just focus on. This, and uh, we won't have to worry about the percentage falling so fast. It won't go up quite as fast, but. You know, you do what you can. Oh, and she just wrecks him. My word. Oh, that arrow's going off again. I need to remember to turn that off when I'm going to record. It just kills my frame rate as it's engaging. Sorry about that. Or not arrow, flux. It should be fine in a second because my monitor turns down here. He doesn't always get affected recording, it looks like. Um. But I apologize for that again. It's not the first time we've had this happen. We don't need to heal lightning. This thing will be dead by then. Probably just one. Yeah. Um. Because I had basically given up on the idea of 7 as a good game. Uh. Mostly just remembering it for its translation problems and uh, for some of its weird, like weirdness in terms of uh, its story and the compilation doesn't help because I think the compilation is genuinely bad, uh, pretty much all around. Oh sweet, we're gonna wreck these guys. Having lightning made this so much better. Um. And admittedly, I've only played Crisis Core and I've only seen Advent Children, but I, so I guess that means I haven't played Dirge of Cerberus because I don't think before Crisis ever came out in America. But you know, it's still one of those things that uh, I look at as doing really like a lot of harm to the idea of Seven as an important game when so much of it has been like commoditized. Uh, especially when so much of it seems to miss the thing that people enjoyed about 7. Um, and maybe I'm wrong about what people enjoy about 7. I think 7's great because of the reasons I talked about, but maybe people like, you know, Sephiroth is a cool guy and Cloud is your task turn hero and Eris is this tragic figure that can, that like, will always be a thing that Cloud holds a candle for. I don't think that's the good parts of 7, though. Uh, like, it's cool that that game has big swords and spiky-haired heroes, and uh, Sephiroth's a cool villain, I won't deny that, but I don't think that's it. Nothing to it. I just don't. I think the appeal of that thing is much more uh, interesting than that. Let's save here. I would like to delete... This one? Overwrite this one. I'm gonna start making save files every, like, episode. That seems like a ridiculous thing to do, but... Just in case something bad happens, I'm constantly worried about something bad happening. Seemingly the only way I can express my feelings about uh, this Let's Plays is to worry constantly that something will go wrong. Not a very healthy way to enjoy anything, really. Yeah, that's, that's just straight up easy now. 
Lightning saving the day. More of those drones, looks like. Oh no, owls. Okay, we can deal with owls. Owls are easy. Just Even if there's two of them. Yeah, they just die in like two rounds of attack. Remember when these were threatening like 20 minutes ago when I was having a hard time and constantly near death? Those are good times. Thing to remember. To be fair, this is the game teaching you Hey, you don't want to not have a commando in your party, because commandos will save your butt over and over again. Uh, playing this without a commando is really hard. Awesome. Awesome. Time to get serious. If we kill this fast enough, we might be able to actually still stagger one of the robot guys. Stagger with the uh, with a rat with a commando is actually way better too because it doesn't drain nearly as fast. I don't understand exactly the mechanic behind that, but it's good. It's good. I like not feeling like I'm constantly about to die. There we go. Fighting, kill that guy. I just wish this game's lessons and party mechanics weren't metered out over the course of 20 hours, but you know, everyone who plays this game has that same complaint. It's a, it's a legitimately terrible thing to do. We'll stop, and I think we've got enough to start boosting our Crystarium again. It seems like increasing these actually increases them across the board, no matter what the uh, what class I am in, which I didn't think was the case, but it seems like the boosts actually just apply to the character. Ravager's done. Finish that. I'm feeling pretty good about all that. That looks like it might be a boss battle, so let's save. What do you suppose that is? Looks like a boss to me, Lightning. What is that? Pulse armament. A Magitech armor, you mean? Yeah, it does look like a Magitech and armor. And that's bad for us, isn't it? You have eyes, don't you? Rude. We want to lead for that immediately. What's it say? Nothing? It's weak to... Uh, I mean, it's all of it... It's halves magic and defense, really. Uh, we want to do this. Vigilance do. Give it to lightning. Hold it together. Get one more heal off, and we'll switch to. Oh, Jesus. 
We're doing a lot of damage, though, now that we've got all this taken care of. I think we can stagger before we kill it. I feel pretty good about this. Died really fast. Oh. Well, never mind. Could have gone better. I thought we were goners. You alright? Incoming. Can we leave it again? Physical attacks, susceptible to deep protect, right. <laughs> give that to lightning. I think I'm gonna give one to myself as well. Now let's fight this guy. Yeah, we're gonna want that heal. I owe ya. Does Steam Queen remove his debuffs? Oh yeah, it totally does. Just do this. Enough nonsense. We might be able to stagger him if we're uh, quick about it. Awesome. Yeah, lightning's uh, cleaning up. She seems to be doing way better than we are in general. We'll take four stars on that. I feel pretty good about that. Medic roll for lightning, commander roll for Zaz. Awesome. Pulses exactly what Zaz like needed. That, isn't it? Got me. Not even the core has access to intel on Pulse. Soldiers in the field fight blind. Yeah, I noticed that. But don't you need to know exactly what you're up against? Target's a target. You like to keep it simple, don't you? I stick to my goal. As long as you have a goal, you can fight? You can stay alive. Okay, save stations to upgrade weapons. That means it's time for me to go research that stuff. After choosing an upgrade, select the weapon, select the type of component, combined XP value to be applied. Enough XP is spent, its level increase. Certain components bestow a bonus to any XP spent on a piece of equipment. Make more efficient upgrades. Some components reduce an XP bonus, so that's bad. Uh, it has, has a maximum potential, then you can't advance it, but you can transform it. Oh no, 
this is so complicated. I feel like this is one of those things I shouldn't even touch until like later on. But I don't know, I'm gonna have to do some research, I guess. It all seems very intimidating, I'll say that. Because I don't want to get locked into like a system now only to find like way better weapons later on and then I've dropped all this points into nonsense that I'm not going to use. And, you know, like there's a lot of concern there. Um, let's Crystal him up. Definitely want to give him commando points. Oh, really? Damn. Okay. Oh god, I want launch. Launch is the best. Got about launch. Um. Let's work on this. So is this, like, because it's really long, like, a more expensive one, or is this, these are going to get more expensive as we go? I guess I don't know the answer to that. Data log. Um. I don't think we've seen anything, like, particularly new here. Um. Cub, one thing. There was something at the Erudite Gorge on day five. That'll come in relevant later. Um, we're just finishing up real fast. Uh, War of Transgression was the fight between Cocoon and Pulse. There's all sorts of Cocoon nonsense here. Bile Peaks are a trash heap. Phoenix is that big light in the sky that we saw. Uh, all of the Bile Sea, at least the Cocoon ones that we found, are uh, named after previous summons, which I think is really cool. Um, Anyway, I'll go clean that stuff up on my own. Um, and we're gonna save. And we might call it here. Make this kind of a short episode. Uh, it's late at night. I don't normally record this late. And I'm just not feeling uh, particularly up to snuff today. So, thanks so much for watching. Uh, thanks for listening to me ramble about Final Fantasy VII. Maybe uh, next time, if we have a lull period, I'll ramble about Final Fantasy VIII, which I have a lot to say about. Alright, uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, you can find me at normalmapping.com and on iTunes, and see you next time. Bye.